Hey, it's your Wisconsin Wine Guy. Oh my gosh, I don't know about you, but when the sun is shining, I am like energized. Hey, it's like always a party when the sun is shining. So I hope you're enjoying this sunshine. Summer is coming. Summer is here for some of us. Well, now we're back with the wine review. And these are wines that you can find on the shelves of your everyday liquor store, grocery store, and some wine shops. I make a selection of wines and give you my personal opinion to use as a guide in deciding what you would like to purchase on those shelves. I mean, there's so much wine out there. Somebody please, you know, give me some type of hint as to what I may should be tasting. And that's where I come in at. Oh, by the way, I also want to thank all of you for your comments, for your feedbacks. You know, this is what a wine community is about. And also for the suggestions of wines that you would like to have me taste and give you my opinion on those as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tell your friends, let's share, let's grow it. Let's build this community. Now, very, very simple process. I do not stand on ceremony. You know, thumbs up. Recommend that wine, you know. I'm drinking it. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a good buy for you. You should give it a try. Three quarters. Hey, wow. A discovery that I had at a party. You know, I was drinking on this wine. It was so good, you know, and I want to keep a couple of bottles at home. You know, so give it a try. Let us know what you think. Halfway, mm, not so much for me, you know, but, you know, there's something about the wine that just didn't resonate with my palate. But it doesn't mean that it's not a good wine. It just didn't resonate with my palate. You give it a try and then let the rest of us know. Thumbs down. I'm going to stand firm on that one. If I give it one a thumbs down, there ain't nothing happening there. And then my extra, extra special category, which comes out every so often, double thumbs up. And that's like, wow, you know, that is a definite wine you should try. So let's get down to our summertime drinking. I have three wines for you today, you know, and it puts me in my element to be able to try multiple wines from the same label. That is so cool to me because it gives you an idea of, like we used to say in the Caribbean, you know, a tasting of one's hand. You know, this is the winemaker's thumbprint across the board. There's that underlying thing that builds consistency when producing their wines. So we're going to be going to Oregon, and the wine is going to be Portlandia. Not the movie. But the winery, <laughs> wow, you know, I, I know I've been seeing this on the shelves of the grocery stores and liquor stores quite a bit, you know, and I'm like, you know, why need to give this a try? So I went ahead and did a trifecta for you. We have the, the Portlandia Pinot Gris, with a surprise. We have the Portlandia Rosé, with a surprise. I, I like saying that, with a surprise, because there is a surprise in those two. And we have the Portlandia Pinot Noir. Okay, so the Pinot Noir is going to be 2019, the Rosé is going to be 2020, the Pinot Gris is going to be 2019. Now, as always, when I have multiple wines, I like to get all the wines poured and then talk about, well, taste and talk about the wines. So I'm going to be pouring a Pinot Gris, give you a chance to get a view of the wine so you can see how beautiful it is in a glass. Woo! Baby, wow. You can smell, you know, those uh, melon notes on that wine. So that's going to be my Pinot Gris. Screw cap. Again, what I tell you, I don't stand on ceremony. If the wine is good, I don't care what the closure is. And especially on a screw cap, if that wine isn't good, like if there's a fault in the wine, yeah, it went in the bottle that way. There's nothing you can do about that, killer. That's how it went into the bottle. All right, now for the Pinot Noir. I give you the alcohol of each of the wines as I go through. All right, I'm going to switch my art here a little bit. So Pinot Gris is going to be here, Pinot no, uh, Rosé in the middle, and Pinot Noir on the end. Now, here is the Pinot Gris. Now, I told you there was something special about that wine. Now, it may look like pretty clear on your end, but on my end, we're talking about nice yellow greenish hues in this wine. On the nose, ah, oh, melon pear going on here, you know. Oh, ooh, that's something else there. Apple. Like, um, almost like, what is it? What is it? Fennel <laughs> coming in here. Wow. Oh, that's pretty nice, you know. Uh, so, subtly floral. <laughs> I like the way that sounded. Subtly floral. Mm. That's the Pinot Gris. So that's going to be at 13.5% alcohol on the Pinot Gris. Now, what's so special about the Pinot Gris? 
What the winemaker does with Pinot Gris is throw in a splash of Gewürztraminer and Riesling just to kind of round it out, you know, and you can kind of pick up on some of that. You know, I wonder if you're going to be able to taste some of that. Mm, very ripe, very fruity, but the melon just really comes through. Subtle citrus notes here. I can't wait to taste the acidity here. Your rosé. It's going to be a 2020 rosé again. Alcohol is coming in at 13%. Something special going on here in the bottle. Did what the winemaker did with the rosé. You know what? Let's just keep it going. This is almost like a Pinot Pinot. So we got Pinot Noir, also with a splash of Gewürztraminer and Riesling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I get more citrus notes here. Blended in with the background of red fruits like cherry, like a tangy cherry. Melon, hmm, ah, wow, I mean, nice nose, I mean, very, very elegant, very fresh smelling on the nose. Pinot Noir, no additions to this, it's just a 100% Pinot Noir coming from multiple valleys. I did I say that this all comes from the Willamette Valley in Oregon. So, Pinot Noir being sourced from multiple vineyards. Ah, man, again, you have that, that tart cherry here, but you have like nice, Ah, nice, almost like, um, what do I want to say, like spice cherry. I'm gonna, I don't want to say cherry pie, you know, I want to say just like a, like a spice cherry note here. Because I don't want, I don't want to confuse a cherry pie uh, with the spices with it being like a sweet cherry pie smell. No, it's not that. Nice spicy notes. We get cedar, this one, cedar notes or wood notes. In the background, mm. wow, wow, that's that's pretty nice. I want to say that there's a uh, ooh, wow. I mean, there's just so much going on here that I'm trying to go real quick. I don't want to like be spend like 30 minutes, you know, on the wines here. Mm. But wow, nice cherry nose again, nice spice. This is aged in French and American oak for 10 months. All right. Let's get to the tasting. First round up is going to be two-step process for me. It's going to be doing the rinse. Doing the rinse of all the wines, checking the acidity. Let's see what we got here. Hopefully they play nice as we go down the line. Wow. Very lively on the palate. It's going to be interesting to see if they play nice. I probably should have reversed the order, but very nice. Very lively. Wow, love that. Clean. Now for the rose. Mm. You definitely get the progression. You know that this is Pinot Noir. But then that, that roundness, you know, that exists there. That fruitiness that exists there. Very, very nice. Nice acidity. Again. I think the acidity is more here, but it's still nice, pleasant acidity. Let me give it another taste. Mm. There it is. Wow, that's that's just gorgeous. That cherry, those cherry flavors just really come through. Now for the Pinot Noir. So I'm definitely going two sips on that. But that acidity is pretty nice. My mouth was watering much more on the Pinot Noir. But very well balanced. I mean, each of these... But very well balanced for my palate. Mm. Wow, so that acidity is kicking. Let me put this in the view. So that acidity is kicking in the wine. All right, all three. That's what I always say. No acidity, no game, no play. But these are in the game so far. Now for the second taste. Oh, wow, that finish on the Pinot Noir. It's very elegant, you know, a nice elegant Pinot Noir, you know, coming from Portlandia. Mmm, smooth finish, like lasting, not like care lasting, but just like it's there. It's just like it's, I'm like I'm hanging out, I'm hanging around. I like that. Not overpowering, not oversuming, not intimidating, but I'm just hanging out right there. Mmm, nice. Here's a taste. Mmm. The other reason I like tasting. 
wires from the same lot or the same wiring. See how nicely they play within their their own family and so forth. You can go back and forth with these wines. This is great. Wow. Wow. If you're looking for a summer drinking wine, times three, you can't go home with the Portlandia wines. I'm going to grade all these one time. Double thumbs up. It's just so pleasant, so elegant, so refreshing, so clean, so balanced. And, and, and the, the addition of the Gewürztraminer demeanor and the, the Riesling between the Rosé and the Pinot Gris, I mean, it just accentuates the wine, accentuates its fruitiness, you know, but not taken away from the acidity. You know, and the Pinot Noir is just lovely. Double thumbs up. Portlandia, the 2019 Pinot Gris, the 2020 Rosé, the 2019 Pinot Noir. Double thumbs up. There you have it. You know, this is just maybe my summer go-to wine. Stock up on it, y'all. See you next time. And as always, let your palate be the guide when selecting your wine. Ciao.